Songbook, turn to 129, 129 in your hymnal. <clears throat> We're going to sing this morning the Battle Hymn of the Republic, number 129. And if you are able to stand with us, we'll invite you to do that as we stand together and sing. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the come of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where grace was wrath restored. He hath loosed the faithful lightning, his terrible sword, his truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. I have seen him in the watchfires of hundred circling camps. They have builded him an altar in evening dews and damps. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamp. His day is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah, his day is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never sound retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Our God is marching on. In the beauty of the lily, Christ was born across the sea. Figures you and me, as he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free, while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah, is marching on. Amen. All right, let's bow our heads together and ask the Lord's blessing here this morning. Father, we thank you again for the opportunity we have to be able to come together around your word today. And Lord, we pray you give each one a very special blessing for being here. We pray, Lord, that you would <clears throat> be with those who cannot be with us today, give strength and encouragement where it may be needed, that we'll be able to uh, come together again here soon. I pray, Father, that you would take the different uh, special requests that we had here earlier this morning for each one that your will be done, would be physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, financially. We pray, Father, that you would be honored and glorified and truly that uh, you'd work things out for our good and your glory. And we'll thank and praise you. We ask you bless now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Just a couple of real quick announcements. I don't want to take a lot of time this morning. Uh, I want to remind you that what we'll do is in just a little bit, uh, we'd like to ask you to help us out today with a love offering for Brother Anderson. He and Miss Robin are going to be with us all day today. And we'd like to uh, do something special for them. So if you haven't already done so, take a minute to get an offering envelope and uh, designate somehow on that envelope or on your check, whatever, if you want to put so much aside for the Andersons. Uh, that would be great. <clears throat> just uh, put that in. If you want to put it all in one check, that's fine. Just make it out to the church. 
and we'll uh, take care of that. And uh, we'd like to take up a love offering uh, again this evening uh, in that, uh, for that purpose. And so if you are, are able to uh, put something in this morning, uh, that would be great. Uh, and again, do our regular tithes and offerings, and then uh, over and above that, anything that you'd like to do for Brother Anderson, that would be appreciated. Amen? And, um, and as we said, uh, Brother Anderson will be preaching tonight at 7 o'clock, so we want to make a note of that. Um, this week, uh, I was going to mention this, this was placed on our door here the other day. If you got leaves and you are interested in having some help, the middle school across the street, Beaver County Christian School, is going to be going through the neighborhood raking leaves for free. Good deal. Amen? Ms. Peggy, you, they've come to your place a couple years now, haven't they? And, and so, uh, amen. So if you are in the area and need some leaf uh, type raking up, uh, or you know somebody, uh, there's a phone number on here you can call. Uh, the school, and they will uh, take your name and address. And of course, then they said that this will be taking place on Tuesday from about 12.30 to 2.30, and the houses will be served on a first-come, first-served basis. So uh, if you know somebody in the area, that, that would be uh, helpful, helpful to them. Uh, we've got the information here, okay? Uh, it seems like there was something else. Uh, Brother Daryl and I we were out last, last Friday, uh, at Rogers, uh, we had, uh, uh, it was a slow day, but a good day. Uh, we got one more Friday. We've, we keep extending it. I keep telling you we're, we're going to have one more Friday, and then we wind up getting signed up for another week, and then another week, and so forth. Uh, we started out going uh, there. Uh, our big weekend actually was on Labor Day weekend. We were doing our gospel walking sticks and witnessing to folks and passing out tracts and so forth. And uh, it just kind of kept extending after Labor Day. And, um, but I think that as it looks right now, we're probably going to finish up this Friday. And uh, simply because the next two weeks after that, we'll be kind of getting us right up against uh, uh, Thanksgiving and uh, Black Friday. And uh, most likely, from every conversation I've had with the vendors out there, the, um, the attendance... Um, the number of people that are there drops drastically. <laughs> so there won't be a whole lot of activity going on. So rather than us just you know, trying to do that the next couple of weeks, we figure this would be a good time to cut it off. And uh, so we will be looking at, Lord willing, maybe in the spring when the weather gets nice and we can get folks out, uh, probably setting things up again. Uh, it's been a different type of ad uh, venture that we've launched into. Uh, we're still giving out gospel walking sticks, amen. Uh, and Daryl's had an opportunity to talk to a few folks here and there. And um, actually, we've had uh, kind of interesting conversations with a few different folks come by from time to time. And uh, every once in a while, we get a Christian person who will come by and say, Hey, keep up the good work. I'm glad you're here. And so it's encouraging, you know, that, that we are able to do that. Um, and uh, praise the Lord, we've had uh, three people that we've led to Christ. And so that's, that's good. Amen. That's a blessing. And so I uh, ask that you would pray for us this coming Friday. We'll wrap that up. And then, uh, as I said this morning, also be in prayer for youth rally plans. Uh, normally on the third week of uh, November would be our annual youth rally. And what we're doing is we're going to back it up a little bit. I think we're going to get, it seems like we're going to go closer to the second week of December now. Uh, that might help us to do a few other things we're still working on. Um, and we, like I said, we had four churches this week contact us, inquiring about what our plans were. And I told them, I said, hang tight. We'll, we'll try to get some something a little more information to you. I was hoping we could have done it already. But um, just because of the whole um, thing of, of youth groups traveling and whatnot, uh, we had several churches uh, through our youth fellowship that had had some COVID issues. And, and because of that, uh, a number of the folks were quarantined and things of that nature. So because of that, we felt like we've got to try to be cautious and careful about how we're going to set this up. So anyhow, we're still praying about still trying to do something. Amen. 
even if uh, even if we put Brother Tim on the camera and live stream it and just get stupid for the afternoon, amen? As I said uh, to you a couple weeks ago, probably what we need to do when it comes to the whole thing, we're going to send out a packet to the churches, and if they could, each of their youth groups could assemble at their facilities, and we'll have different remote locations going on at the same time. They can have their activity going on at their place and then join in with us, and we're trying to figure out how to coordinate all that. And then when it comes time for dinner, they can pull out their packet, and we're going to put a scratch and sniff turkey there, amen, so they can scratch it, amen? And I say, okay, there's a mashed potatoes, scratch and sniff that, amen? So, uh, anyhow, we'll see what we do. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, very good. Um, I think that's it. Uh, continue to pray for the RU meetings. Uh, Donnie's been coming every Friday night and uh, working towards uh, getting established here with the recovery uh, addiction and, I would say, discipleship program. So if you would keep that in prayer uh, as we go forward with that, that would be, we appreciate it. Um, also, um, uh, Donnie and Joe have been trying to get one day a week, go out for a couple hours. Uh, Donnie and I went out yesterday for a few hours. We got out and we scanned a whole other area down 4th Avenue. I think we got probably 10 blocks of addresses that we'll be mailing out. And we sent a postcard to them ahead of time and, and then be able to uh, go to that area and, and knock the doors. Uh, we then turned around and probably did five or six blocks uh, of uh, we knocked on doors. We had some good uh, response. Um, praise the Lord for uh, yeah, every once in a while somebody gets kind of stupid with you, but you know, it's it's not been even that it's not been bad, uh, but for the most part, folks are very receptive. I'm glad that uh, that we stopped by. So, uh, anyhow, just keep praying as we've been doing some soul winning, door knocking. Pray that the Lord will direct us in the right place, talk to the right person. Uh, Donnie and Joe were out. Uh, what day was it? Thursday, Friday. That's right. It was okay. Friday, Friday afternoon. Um, so they stopped out and uh, had a lady that uh, they led the Lord uh, out in New Galley. And so, uh, praise the Lord. And so, uh, we've got a couple other folks. Terry was just saying here a few minutes ago, um, I also I lost her name, Elise. Elise, um, I want to keep her in prayer, uh, trying to get her back here uh, for services. And sometimes it's a it's a transportation issue, and so we're working those things out and so forth. Anyhow, we've got folks out there that we've been making contact with. Uh, one gentleman, I walked up to the porch yesterday and, and introduced myself, told him who I was, and I said, hey, we're going through the area, just checking on the neighbors, make sure everybody's okay, do you need anything? We got, you know, uh, prayer requests or anything like that. And uh, I think his comment was, we're doing well, and let's see, I'm trying to remember how exactly I said, doing well. And, uh, and we're heavily armed, or something like that. <laughs> I said, oh, you're lock and loaded, are you? He said, yes, sir. And, uh, and uh, so anyhow, we had a little fun with that. And we talked a few minutes, and then uh, before we got done, I said, well, I hope you'll come by and pay us a visit. He says, you know, I just might do that. He says, I, I, he says, I may just show up one day. I said, well, good. We'd love to have you come. So uh, gave him a gospel tract and so forth. But anyhow, uh, you know, just getting out, knocking on some doors, inviting folks out, and uh, praise the Lord, uh, lady got saved this week. So let's keep uh, keep keep doing that, amen. And so if you're available, uh, Donnie's available. Donnie's just he's like Richard. I like to go every day, amen. So if I had somebody to go, uh, so if you got a day that you're free, uh, we'll we'll pair you up, and uh, maybe uh, you know maybe Saturday doesn't work for you. If another time does, let let me know. Let Donnie know. We'll we'll meet. We'll put you together. We've been trying to get out on Saturday afternoon for a little bit, doing some uh, calls that way and, and door knocking. So anyhow, if you are available, uh, see us, and we'll set you up with a time. All right? Okay, uh, let's do this. Let's take our songbook and sing one more number here. Miss Marie, what was it, 323? Okay, 323. 323. And we're going to get you to stand one more time because we're singing Standing on the Promises. Amen? Brother Anderson gave us a little bit of a promise here this morning. Out of the book of James, he said, The effectual fervent prayer 
of a righteous man availeth much. That's a promise from God, brother. God said the effectual fervent prayer, amen, the effectual fervent prayer availeth much. So as we pray, as we heard this morning, man, that's a promise from God, amen. All right, number 323, join in as we sing together now. <clears throat> Standing on the promises of Christ, my King, through eternal ages let us praise and sing. Glory in the highest I shall and sing. Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, Standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail. <clears throat> standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises, Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love, strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God, standing, Standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I cannot fall. Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Brother Anderson, good to have you and Miss Robin with us. And for those that maybe, I think for the most part, everybody I'm looking around, I think you've been here before a couple of times, and so I think they're pretty much familiar with you. And I know that we have you on our prayer list here quite often. Uh, we sometimes have to update our preachers and churches and and we uh, emphasize having the Andersons on your prayer list. And so anyhow, uh, Brother Anderson has been, what, is it been up to, are we at 19 years now in Cory? Going on 19, that's what I In a couple months, will be 19 years. Amen. Uh, we first got acquainted, as you heard him saying uh, in the Sunday School Hour, when he was pastoring down in Clareton, uh, south of Pittsburgh there a little bit, around that area. Um, we first got acquainted there, and uh, through some crazy circumstances, <laughs> uh, the Lord uh, took them to the church, and then uh, they uh, had quite the problem. Uh, I'll just say it this way. He didn't say this, but I'll say it. A bunch of mossy back deacons that didn't know what was right, and some probably weren't even saved, uh, that were trying to run the church, basically wanted to run the preacher out. And uh, he came there as a, as a new pastor, and uh, within a couple months found out the honeymoon was over. <laughs> Amen. It was like, go on. I don't know if there was much of a honeymoon. And, uh, you know, it's all supposed to be wonderful and sweet and everything good. Well, he got to preaching on soul winning and 
and uh, tithing and doing. Any, and I think you made the comment, you know, from the pulpit that uh, you know the leaders of the church, deacons, all those that are uh, you know in those leadership positions should be tithing and so forth and so on. And a couple of them came to him and said, "What do you think you're doing?" And uh, he said, "What do you mean?" He says, "Well, what what gives you the right?" to tell us that we're supposed to be doing these things. <laughs> He's like, well, first of all, the Bible says it. Amen. And secondly, I'm the pastor. And uh, so anyhow, it, it came to a little bit of a confrontation. But you know what, brother? God had his hand in that. And uh, eventually, after it came to a head, Brother Anderson basically said, well, I'm going to, this is what Miss Rob and I are going to, we're leaving here this morning. We're going to be meeting at our house this afternoon. And um, anybody that's interested in having a good Bible-believing church, we're praying about what to do. And so uh, when Brother Anderson walked out, about 20 other people walked out about the same time. And there was a man, if I remember the story right, preacher, you can, you can correct me if I'm wrong. There was a gentleman who was there, stood up, looked around the congregation and said, you know, I've been here 40 years. And I've watched you people do the same thing to three other preachers. I'm going with him. Now, that's not what... He didn't go there for that purpose to see that happen. But you know, even in the midst of the tragedy and the heartache and whatever... Some of those same guys who were, we'll say, were pushing against the preacher. Then there was one fellow that eventually came and wound up in the hospital. And the preacher was able to go by and visit him. And uh, they mended some of those bad feelings and stuff, you know. But Brother Anderson, feeling that God called him there to Claritin, began to pray about what to do and found a little community building down around the corner there. And for, what, two years or better? Uh, continued to go on and have a church, and folks were getting saved, and folks were getting right with the Lord. And, and even during that two-year process, some of the people from the church at Claritin, uh, every once in a while, contact the preacher and say, could you go see so-and-so? <laughs> you know? His testimony of a blessing being there was continuing to go forth. But just as the Lord had opened up the door for him, then it came time that he felt like, well, God was closing the doors there at Claritin and, and uh, began to consider what to do, what, what to take place. And so uh, for about six months after they uh, came to the point of closing the, the ministry there, he, he and Robin actually were driving and coming up here for about six months. They were part of our church here for quite a while. And uh, back and forth and... And, uh, and then the Lord began to open up a door for him there in Corey. And praise the Lord, brother. 19 years now. <laughs> brother Anderson has, has been not only a good friend, but I've got to tell you, uh, you want to talk about a man who's been faithful. And um, I just I appreciate him. Appreciate his faithfulness. He's got just a handful of folks there, but they love him and he loves them. And they're, they're, they're just, it's a blessing. Uh, Donnie and I were talking yesterday about Renee. You know, we, we, we have a tendency to want to make all kinds of excuses as to why we can't serve the Lord. Renee will walk around her block praying that somebody will come along that she can lead the Lord. She walks the block, and she'll just walk around the block and pray that she has somebody that she can witness to. You say, so what? She's blind. <clears throat> Renee is blind, and yet she will go out and walk her block and ask God to give her somebody to witness to. And man, she loves the Lord. Uh, there's times when I've had the opportunity to go by and visit with him there. And <laughs> Renee, bless her heart. I come walking up, and I'll say, Hey, Miss Renee, you know who this is? And she'll pause for a second. You see her cock her head a little bit, and she'll go, Brother Many Penny, it's good to see you. <laughs> She's blind, amen. It's it's good to see you. 
And I'm like, <clears throat> Renee, it's good to see you. Good to be seen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But anyhow, I said all that to say, just a blessing that Brother Anderson been here at, at, uh, at Corey to be able to uh, be a blessing to folks there. There's a gospel witness in that community. And the, even through some of the crazy ups and downs of the ministry, they have continued to be faithful. And what a blessing it is. Amen. To see the Lord working uh, there. And so I uh, ask you to continue to pray for them. Pray for the Lord to uh, bless them and the church there. And uh, looking forward to seeing what the Lord is going to do in the days ahead. Amen. Uh, Brother Anderson calls me up every once in a while and says, Brother May Pan, I just want you to know, I was praying for you early this morning. He says, I pray for you every morning. He says, but I just thought I'd call and check on you and see how you do it. And so I appreciate that. I appreciate his friendship and blessing that uh, that is. So uh, anyhow, Brother Anderson, I want you to come. I'm going to step out of the way. And uh, whatever the Lord's laid on your heart, good to have you with us today, preacher. I appreciate you so much. Got it now. All right. I have, uh, that's a little bit better. That's scary. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to be with God's people. I can't think of anything that I'd rather do than to be with God's people on the Lord's day. Amen. Every day is a good day to be with God's people. Uh, Pastor Minnie was talking about Sister Renee. When I first got there, uh, Sister Renee came to me. She she has taught me so much about how to minister to blind people. We don't think about uh, people, uh, you know, blind people. We just don't. And uh, they didn't teach us that in Bible college, by the way. But she came to me and she said, Preacher, this is my Bible. And she had a great big old book. She said, it's in Braille. And I said, Wow. She says, I have 17 volumes of the King James Bible. And I said, well, Renee, let me ask you something. I said, how do you know which book to bring? And she says, well, I guess. I said, from now on, you will not guess. You call my house, and I will tell you where I'm going to be preaching at from. And if we have a visiting speaker, I'll, I'll find out and I'll let you know what book to bring. And so she calls my house every time to find out where they're going to be preaching at. In fact, I called her. I found out who uh, the, the speaker that we were having at our church today. I had called him up and told him that I needed to know the book that he was going to be preaching out of. Would he be, is he settled now as where he's going and what he's going to do? And he said, yes, sir, I am. So he gave me the book. So I called Renee. I said, Renee, while I'm out of town now, this is the book you're going to need. And uh, she has taught me so much. And I remember one time I was preaching. I said, some of y'all look like a calf looking at a new gate. She called me up and she said, preacher, how does a calf Look at a new gate. Well, she'd never seen a calf. She didn't know what a new gate was. I was preaching one day and talking about the billboards. You ride down the road and billboards, uh, you almost have to put your blinders on with some of the stuff that's up there. And she called me up that night and said, Preacher, what is a billboard? These are things that we take for granted. And uh, But uh, what a blessing. She... Uh, she goes and uh, knocks door or knocks doors when she got somebody to go with and gets around town there and and listen she's come a long way with the lord and uh it would make most of us that could see good uh, uh 
uh, want to jump under the pew. I mean, you tell you, she's in, in her place. She, I told her one day, I said, Renee, I said, you got a red shoe on and a blue shoe. She said, no, I don't, preacher. I said, Renee, I'm trying to tell you, I'm looking at him. She said, oh, preacher, no, I've got the same color shoes on. Somehow or another, she knew. She's got all kinds of gadgets in her home that helps her. She can, uh, she's got a gadget that uh, can tell you how much the money is, whether it's a one or a five or a 10 or a 20. She's got all that. And uh, she's got Lexus there that turns the radio on for her. She listens to a good gospel radio station. Um, and uh, just uh, yeah, what a blessing. But what a blessing to be with you today. We're glad that you're here. Uh, I've been, uh, ever since I found out, I've been coming, I've been, I've been chomping at the bit to come and be with you. I'm, uh, I'm not the same uh, size that I used to be. Uh, we had a, uh, we had a church uh, anniversary and I called the news people and I told them, I said, you need to come to my office. We're celebrating 38 years uh, of service to the community at our church, you need to bring your camera and come on. So they sent somebody out and the guy came, he interviewed me. We got front page news and Corey for free. And they took a picture of the pastor sitting at his desk. And I saw that picture and God smote my heart. I was 300 pounds. I could not believe that food fellowships and my belly ship at home uh, caused me to get 300 pounds. I said, that's it. I got to do something. And the doctor told me, he said, uh, you don't need to have a pacemaker. You need to lose 100 pounds. He said, if you lose 100 pounds, he said, uh, you, you'll do pretty good. Well, I lost 75 and then they had to put the pacemaker in anyhow. So go figure. But that's all right. I'm glad I'm 75 pounds down now. My goal is to be 100, and I need your prayers that God would help me to be what I need to be for him. And uh, what a blessing. So we're glad you're here, and I'm glad I'm here, and I'm aching to preach. I tell my church all the time, I'm aching to preach, uh, folks. And they say, well, we're aching to hear you too, preacher. Remember Daniel Boone? How many remember Daniel Boone? Uh, see Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone used to go somewhere and he'd find a nice pretty dress and he'd say, boy, I'm going to get that for, I forget who his wife's name was. He said, I'm going to get that for her. I said, I'm aching to see her in it. And I said, man, I'm aching to preach. Amen. Get your Bibles this morning. Let's turn to book of Matthew. And uh, what a blessing. Our church uh, sends their best to you, and uh, we're, we're excited on what they're uh, doing there at the church today. We're having a Thanksgiving fellowship next Sunday at our church, and uh, I told the people, I said, we're not going to have a Thanksgiving banquet, but we're going to have a Thanksgiving uh, fellowship, so everybody's going to bring their turkey or their whatever they want to bring. What I told them, lobsters, uh, steak, uh, shrimp, you know, all that good stuff. But uh, anyhow, uh, that we're excited about that next week. Matthew 17, good to be with your preacher. What a blessing to be back with my friend. Matthew 17 and verse 1, watch it now. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elias, talking with, them, with him, then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, excuse me, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elijah, Elias. 
uh, while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Let's pray. Father, we need you. Lord, we need you to work in our hearts this morning. Lord, I would ask that you'd move around this room and Lord, just do something wonderful for each one. Lord, I don't know what's going on in a group uh, of people like we have here today, but God, you do. And Lord, uh, you know exactly what each one of us need today. And Father, I pray that you'd help us and, and uh, draw us close to you. Lord, as I made mention this morning, I'm amazed at the churches now that don't use their altar. And Lord, I, we always use our altar at our church. And Lord, I believe that some of the greatest prayers that a person can ever get answered would be when they would step out of their seat and come to the old-fashioned altar and share their burden. So, Lord, help us to be what we need to be today as we sit before you and worship you. Lord, I pray that you'd help me to be what I need to be for you and your people. Lord, uh, I know I'm going to give an account one day for this moment. Lord, I want to be able to give a good account, so I'm calling on you to help me and uh, lift me up and hide me beneath the cross, Lord, and help me be what I need to be. Guide and direct, do something wonderful for us today. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Verse four, verse four, then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. Uh, Peter said here in verse 4, he said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. And uh, listen, uh, when Peter saw all that was happening around him, he completely didn't know what he was seeing, but he knew he was in a good place. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, a good place. I like a good place. We had a good place to stay last night, and uh, we appreciate it and say thank you so much. Uh, we had a nice uh, room to spend the night in. and In fact, I don't even think the heat cut on at all, and uh, it was comfortable in the room all night. And uh, so I, Robin and I haven't quite figured out how to put the mattress in the back of our car to get it back to Corey because the mattress is so comfortable. And uh, uh, I'm telling you, that bed sleeps. Oh, man, I slept good and thank God for it. But I want to talk to you a little bit about a good place, a good place. And I want to help us to know to know a good place when we see it. How, how can we know this? Well, listen to me. You might be in a valley this morning, but that valley might be a good place for you or me. You might be in a time of physical pain, but that valley might just be a good place for you or me. You might be in a place of emotional trouble Oh, but listen, that valley might just be a good place for you and I. You might be in a place of financial turmoil or 10,000 other things today, uh, but whatever it is, it might be a good place. Watch this now. You know you're in a good place when 
First, you can examine his glory. You can examine his glory. Let's look at our text, verse seven, or chapter 17, and after six days, verse 1, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bring them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Can you imagine being there and seeing Jesus light up? Brighter than the sun, the Bible says. And oh, listen, verse one says he took these three men with him up on the mountain. And these three men were Peter, James, and John. And these three men were considered the Lord's inner circle. In fact, this was not the first time that Jesus selected these men for a special ministry. You see, these three men were with Jesus when he raised Jairus' daughter up from the dead. You remember, they, uh, Jesus said that uh, she's not dead, she sleeps, the Bible says, and they laughed him to scorn. And uh, Jesus had everybody out of the room before he did his miracle there. Uh, if you're going to be uh, full of unbelief, then you don't need to be around while I'm doing this. I don't want you to see it. But there was three men that were there with him during that time when he raised Jairus' daughter up uh, from the dead. Uh, these three same men. Now, wait a minute. Now, I thought God's not a doesn't have his favors. Well, hear me out here. Uh, uh, these three men were also with Jesus when he prayed in Gethsemane. And uh, here in our text, they're with Jesus now on the mountain where Jesus is transfigured uh, before them. And all oh, listen, the Bible tells us in Romans 2 and verse 11 for there is no respecter of persons with God. Oh, but listen to me today. There's some believers that are closer to him than others. Are you listening? There's some believers today that are closer to the Lord than others. Now, this doesn't mean that Jesus loves them uh, some more uh, or love uh, some more than he loves others. But listen, there's some people that are more responsive to his love than others. Can I tell you something? If you love God, the pastor doesn't have to be concerned about you being in church. You're going to be there. You're going to be there. You know, when I first went to Corey, I thought, that, that, that it snowed and it snowed and it snowed. And, and I thought, boy, them people's not going to come and hear me. They're, they're not going to come to church. Boy, was I surprised when I got to church and they were all there and they had the parking lots cleaned out and had the, the sidewalk all swept and cleaned. I couldn't believe it. And I've got people now that's been with me going on 19 years and you know what? I don't have to wonder, are they in church today because their pastors up are down in Beaver Falls? No, they're there. They're there. Huh? Renee is there. She's already got the book. She's there. I mean, listen, there's some people, I'm not saying necessarily my people, but I'm saying, listen, can I tell you, you're as close to God as you want to be. Are you listening to me? If you want to be close to God, you can be close to God. The Bible says in James 4 and verse 8, it says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Hey, listen, God does not move. You know, the election... Oh, preacher, you had to say something about the election. No, listen, God is still God. No matter who's going to win the election, Jesus is still on the throne. Jesus has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But God, let me say this, God never moves. 
And the Bible says in James that we draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. But wait a minute, wait a minute. You're going along, you're doing good. And all of a sudden you moved. Who moved? You did. You did. We did. I did. But God never moves. And I'm so thankful for that, that no matter what's going on in the world today, uh, listen, the Lord is still Lord. But uh, in reality, folks are close to the Lord as they want to be. And we must remember that those who are open to all that God has for them are likely to see him move in glory and power. And those that tend to stay farther away from the Lord, they won't see the power of God like the others. Here in verse 1, the Bible says they're in a high mountain. And Peter wrote about what he'd seen in 2 Peter 1 in verse 16 and 18. And he referred to this mountain as a holy mountain. And for Peter, that uh, high place became a holy place to him. And he said in verse 4, he said, it is good for us to be here. And there's going to be times in our lives when his presence is so real and his glory is very clear for us to see. And oh, listen, when you find yourself in a place, when you find yourself in a place where you can examine his glory, then I'd have to say you're in a good place. No matter what you're going through in your life, you're in a good place if you can see the Lord working in your life. You're in a good place, irregardless of what's going on. I, I Listen, you can talk about coronavirus or you can talk about anything you want, but listen, I'm going to stay in the will of God. Amen? And I'm going to trust God to take care of me. The world can do whatever they want to do, but I'm going to stay right with the Lord. That's where I need to be. That's where God expects me to be. So you know what? I have to draw nigh to God. And when I draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to me. And uh, listen, I'll see him working in my life. And it's amazing how I've seen him work. I decided I was going to, uh, I lost all this weight. And I felt like, man, I can get back outside and paint my house and get like I used to, I found out I wasn't quite that spiffy, but uh, I got out on the ladder and uh, was painting along. And the next thing I knew, I was on the ground. And uh, I used to be a painter, I used to paint for a living. And I always learned that when you come down off the ladder, you bring the paint bucket with you. That way, if you hit the ladder by accident, you won't get a bucket of paint on your head or get paint all over somebody's yard or whatever. So I always learned that when you come down from the ladder, you bring the paint with you. And when I hit the ground, I, 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 was, I was standing in the, on the ladder. Next thing you know, I was on the ground. And when I hit the ground, I had an awful pain in my chest. And in fact, the handle on the brush was stuck in the dirt. And the first thing I did was I looked to see where that paint bucket was. And that paint bucket was still on that ladder. I knew that something had happened because as a trained painter, you bring the bucket with you when you come down. And uh, that bucket was still up there. So that told me something. So I. Robin, she was out in the front digging out the flower bed or doing something. And I hollered for Robin. I couldn't even get up. I had an awful pain in my chest. But uh, the Lord was good to me. And, you know, I saw him work that night in my life. I told Robin, she said, let me call the ambulance. I said, no, don't call the ambulance. Don't do that. Take me to urgent care at the Veterans Hospital in Erie. And... Uh, I said, bring a bucket so if I get sick, I can use that bucket. And uh, so anyhow, she drove. We got all the way to the VA, and I got inside, and the 
Next thing I know, here they come with a collar, want to put a collar on, come with baby aspirins and all this stuff. And uh, they run an EKG, and the next thing I know, they said, uh, uh, we're sending you to Hammock. Uh, the VA is going to pay for this, and the ambulance will be here any minute. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord took care of me. And I went in the ambulance, and uh, they, they fixed me up. The next day, they told me I was in heart block. The top of the heart was moving, but the bottom of the heart was not responding like it's supposed to. So they said, you need a pacemaker. So the next day, they put it in. But uh, praise God, I come on out of there uh, pretty quick. And, uh, but the Lord's been good to me. And the Lord did that. Now, preacher, did you get your house painted? Well, I got it all painted but the back side. And now, this time of year, on the back side of the house, the sun is shining right on the house. I, I, when I planned on painting my house, that's the way I planned it because I didn't know how long it was going to take me to do it because I only had a couple days a week uh, being in the work of the Lord. I just don't have the time. And uh, so anyhow... Uh, the Lord has worked it out. All this week I've been chewing the cud because the doctors won't let me do anything uh, and, uh, until Tuesday. And uh, so I've been watching the sun shine on the back of the house every day when it's been warm. And uh, the, that uh, uh, aluminum siding is getting up to about 90 degrees, I guess with the sun shining on it. So the Lord's been good. And so the Lord says, even though you got sidetracked just a little bit there, I'm still going to have a window of opportunity for you to go and finish up what you're doing. Hey, listen, that's just God. How many times have you seen God work in your life? You find yourself in a situation, you say, oh, what am I going to do? And you began to talk to God and God could get you through it. And you know what? It was even though we may not enjoyed what we were going through. Hey, listen, if we can see the glory of the Lord, I'd have to say that's a good place to be. That's a good place to be to see the glory of the Lord. And, uh, uh you know, you're in a good place. Uh, and you know, you're in a good place when you can exalt his greatness. When you can exalt his greatness, look in verse three. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. Now, listen, Jesus was transfigured before them hallelujah how would you have i would have loved to have been a, a fly on the wall and seen that amen i i would have loved to seen that jesus is lit up brighter than the sun the bible says and what a blessing what a blessing and he's visited by two people that has already left this earth moses and elijah Moses had been dead 1,500 years, but here he is. He's moving, and he's talking, and they recognize him. And uh, what a reminder we have here. The redeemed of the Lord, you and I, we do not go to the grave and wait for the resurrection. We pass on to glory and we be with the Lord. Aren't you that wonderful? The Bible says absent from the body, present with the Lord. And listen, uh, I'm glad I won't be laying out in some cemetery uh, just rotting away. I'm glad that when I close my eyes here, I wake up over there. Amen? Just that quick. And what a blessing to think about that. But... Uh, we can see here that Moses represents those believers who die in faith. And Elijah did not die, but he was carried off to heaven in a chariot of fire. 
And Elijah represents the saints of God who will one day be gathered up. You know, they got a group now out that says there's not going to be no resurrection. I was knocking doors uh, a while back and some guy said, uh, you, you folks believe in the rapture. And I said, yes, sir, we do. He says, you're wrong. And he started quoting verses. I said, sir, I didn't come out here to argue with you today. I come out here to tell you about Jesus. And I said, and I, I don't really have time to discuss it with you here today. Let me give you a gospel track and invite you to church. That same guy is gone now. He's gone. Say, how you know, preacher? Because we went back through that area and the lady told me her husband died. I don't know what God did. But you know what? I, I hope I see him again. I hope I do. Uh, you know what? I, I'm excited about seeing my family, aren't you? I'm excited about seeing the loved ones that have gone. And you know what? I'm more excited about seeing Jesus. You know, uh, I, I used to be a fisherman. I, I, man, I'd run 10 miles to have a piece of fish to eat. There's got to be some fish somewhere in heaven. By the way, Jesus was giving fish away on the shore, wasn't he? Most of the time, it was fish that they were eating. Hey, listen, I'd love to have one of them good fish from glory. They're, hey, you know what? That fish don't even have to die for me to eat it. I don't even figure that one out. But you know what? God is God, and he's good. And it's wonderful when we can experience uh, and, and exalt his grace. We can exalt his grace. And thank God, the bottom line here is Moses and Elias, Elijah were there to exalt gr the greatness of Jesus and to re reveal to the disciples that Jesus is who he claimed he, he is. You know what? I don't read in the Bible there what the conversation was about. Do you? Huh? Can't you just imagine what the conversation is? I, I, I would give anything if I could plug in and hear that. Hear that conversation with the Lord and his disciples there. But at any rate, they're, they're in a place where they can exalt the Lord's greatness. And what's Peter do? He opens mouth and sticks two feet in. Ever done that? I have. Uh, ever done that? Uh, uh, he opened his mouth and he stuck both feet clean in his mouth. And uh, oh, listen, uh, what a mistake. I understand what he was saying. He was in a good place. He'd seen the Lord and he, he was excited and he says, hey, we're in a good place. And he wants to build a tabernacle now uh, for Jesus and Moses and Elijah. Well, no, no, no. God's not going to put up with that. God's not going to put up with that. And uh, you know what? What happened now, watch it now. It's now not only six persons on that mountain, but now there's seven there. Count them up. Huh? Jesus, Moses, Elijah, Peter, James, John, and God. Are you listening? And what a blessing I'm saying here today. Oh, listen. Uh, the seventh person shows up on the mountain, and when God hears his son being uh, compared to Moses and Elijah, God reminds everyone on the mountain that Jesus is the greatest. And isn't he the greatest today? You know what most people do in churches these days? They have the God of the box on the shelf. When they need God, they pull him down off the shelf and they open up the box and that's when they need God. When everything is going well in their lives, and the finances is good, uh, food good, all this good stuff, car good, everything, they'll put God back in the box and they put God back up on the shelf. And that's where they leave God. 
hey, listen, you, you, you can't do that. Listen, we want to be in a good place. I want to be in a place where I can see my Savior. I want to be in a place where I can exalt His greatness. And I, you know what? I, I'd rather preach and eat. You know how much I love to eat. I, I just say, you know, 300 pounds was pretty, pretty big feller. And uh, uh, I can hear people now, well, preacher, I make this, pay, this cake especially for you. And you've got to have another piece. Oh, yeah, I've got to have another piece just so I can make you happy. But you know what? I'm making myself happy too, but I'm making myself sick. And I've got to do something about it. But uh, you can blame it on whoever you want to blame it on, but I take the blame. It was me. How many love to eat? Be honest now, we all do. My, uh, my mother-in-law... She used to have a she used to have a sign on her refrigerator. He that stuffeth puffeth. I thought, man, that's pretty good. You know, that's what I was doing. I was stuffing and I was puff, I was puffing. I was I was blowing up. I was blowing up, blowing up. But God helped me, and I saw him all through it. And you know, people ask me all the time, how did you do it, preacher? I gave it to him. He had to do it. I got in the prayer closet, the treadmill, and I got to do it. Listen, God was helping me, and he's still helping me. And I can't wait to get back going again. 25 more pounds. Please pray for me. I want to I want to get to get to the goal. And you know what? God has been so good to me and helped me so many ways. And I'd have, you know, on a treadmill, you know, I'd have to say, that's a good place. That's a good place. Huh? It's a good place. Listen, the, the situation that you are in right now, it's a good place. If you can look and, you, and if you can see God working in your life and you can exalt him and you say, Pray the, praise the Lord, then I'd have to say that's a good place. That's a good place for us. Next, let me say, uh, 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 well, let me back up just a little bit. Listen, Jesus is the greatest. He alone is worthy of praise and glory and worship. And uh, listen, when you and I get to the place where nothing and no one but Jesus has our attention, we're in a good place. And this is what happened for them. Uh, when uh, uh, while he yet spake, that's Peter, verse five. Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, "This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him." Watch it now. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. Watch it here. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. They saw him, and he was the only one that they saw at that time. They were in a good place. The Lord had their attention. And when I get to a place in my life where that I, nothing else matters but God, nothing else matters but Jesus. When I get to that place, that's a good place for me. That's where I need to be. Irregardless of what the election is, irregardless of, of how things turn out, irregardless of the fights and the fusses and the riots and all this other stuff, irregardless of what's going on, when you and I have our eyes on Jesus, the world can do what they want. Hey, I'm just passing through. I'm just passing through. Sometimes in people up there, they say, uh, preacher, you're not from around here, are you? And I say, now, why would you say that? And they say, because you, 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 don't, you don't talk. You talk like you're from the South. And I say, I am. I am from the South. Well, what are you doing up here in this cold, snowy place instead of being down in the South? And I want to say, I'm glad you asked. 
I'm here because I follow God here. And I'm still here because God has kept me here. Boy, it's amazing how you can get in a conversation with somebody when you turn the table back to God. When you, turn, when you don't see nothing but him and you turn it back to God, boy, I tell you, uh, Robin, she goes into place and she'll go into Walmart and she'll say, now you know how Robin talks. She's got it worse than I do. Uh, but uh, she'll say, can I have a pound of that Virginia bank ham? And everybody in the place is looking to see who that is. It said that. Huh? Yeah. Boy, it just opens up the window to be able to talk about God. We followed God up there, and God's kept us up there, and we'll stay there till he takes us out, whether by the grave or whether by the rapture, whatever way he takes us out, hey, we're going to win. And you, you think today, uh, when it comes your time to go, uh, uh, you win. I remember one time up there, Robin and I had a little garden, and uh, we... Uh, uh, we grew collard greens. Probably the only time in Cory, Pennsylvania, that collard greens were growing. But that collard greens is a good staple down where I come from. And so we grew collard greens. Man, I had so many of them. They were, I, I, I couldn't eat them fast enough. And so I thought about my neighbor. There was an old man that used to ride up and down the road in a wheelchair. He had one of them electric wheelchairs. And I'd see him and I'd wave at him. And... Uh, uh, sometimes uh, he'd stop and I'd talk to him a minute, but uh, I got them collard greens and I thought, man, I'm going to take them collard greens over there to that old man. And uh, so I got me a sack full of them and I went over there and I knocked on his door. I said, how you doing? He said, I'm doing good, preacher. He said, how you doing? I said, man, I'm doing fine. I brought you something. He said, what'd you bring me, preacher? I said, I brought you some collard greens. He looked at me and he looked like, looked shocked. And he said, preacher, I don't even know what they are. <laughs> he said, but I'm glad you're here. I said, you are? He said, yes. He said, my daughter, he lived with his daughter. He said, my daughter and the kids have all left. They've gone to the store. He said, and I'm all by myself. But he said, I want you to come in. He said, I want to talk to you. And I said, sure. And so I went in and, and uh, we sat down and he said, uh, preacher said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something. I want you to tell me what you think. And I said, okay. And he said, uh, you know, preacher, I've been taking dialysis a long time. And he said, I'm tired of being sick from the dialysis. He said, so I'm thinking about quitting the, the dialysis. What do you think about that? And I said, well, you know what's going to happen when you stop cleaning your blood up. You know what's going to happen. He said, yeah. And he said, and that's why I'm glad you're here today. He said, talk to me about this. And I began to talk to him about Christ. And you know what? He got saved. Because of the collard greens, God showed himself alive and real, and that guy got saved. And uh, I, saw, I saw him uh, uh, a week or so after he received the Lord as his Savior. I saw him coming back around. He looked pretty good. It looked like he got a little energy about himself. And uh, what happened is he went back to dialysis, but he was saved. Well, after a few weeks after that, I was coming home, and I went by, uh, I had to go right by his house to get to mine. And there was a group of people out there and they were all dressed up, nice looking outfits, looked like, looked like something was wrong. And his daughter's name was Sheila. And I rolled, or I looked over at, at her and I said, Sheila, is everything all right here? She said, yeah. She said, but uh, dad died. Dad's gone. I said, you know where your dad's at? She said, no, he's dead. I said, no, he's in heaven. Well, she didn't want to hear that. She didn't want to hear that. So she got away from me. So I, I was going to go to, I wanted to go to the funeral and sit in the funeral because 
usually in the in the funerals up there uh, in Corey, I don't know about around here, but they always open it up for somebody to have something to say. And I was chomping at the bits in that funeral. I just knew that guy was going to open it up for people to talk about something about the loved one. And I was going to tell him how he got saved. But that friar tuck that did that funeral, I wanted to throw my uh, shoe at him because he didn't give us an opportunity to say something. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, listen, God is still in the showing business and God will use us if we'll just do what God wants us to do and can't stay faithful and keep walking with him. And you'll see his greatness. No matter what happens, you'll see his greatness. No matter how far you get away from the Lord, listen, he's still great and he's still God and we need to get back to him. I want to say you're in a good place when you can experience his grace. When you can experience his grace. Uh, uh, verse 5, while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Oh, listen, when these men heard the voice out of the cloud, listen, they began to experience his grace. And oh, listen, you're in a good place when you can feel the touch of Jesus. When you can feel the touch of Jesus. I remember one time we were out knocking doors and uh, we run across an old lady, a real old lady. And I went, uh, she invited us in and, and I ended up leading her to the Lord. And uh, come to find out she was the old meter maid in Corey. And uh, anyhow, she lived in a in a, uh, an elderly section where a, a lot of elderly lived there. And so I ended up leading her to Christ. And after a few years, I had somebody call me and say, Preacher, can you go and visit? And he gave me, they gave me the man's name and they gave me the room number and uh, you know what? I, I went to the I went to church that morning, preached, got done, and I went straight to the hospital to make that visit. And I went up to the room number, and I walked in the room, and it was a lady laying in the bed, and two ladies were beside her. And I looked and I said, "Oh, I'm in the wrong room." And I said, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong room." And the lady looks at me and she says, no, you're in the right room. She says, in fact, we were just praying that God would send us somebody that could pray with us over mama. She says, you don't remember me, but she says, I remember you. She says, you came to my mama's house one day. And she says, and you talked to her about Jesus. And she says, you know, she says, you didn't know I was there, but I was in the back. I was doing some straightening up for mama. And since you was way, way you were going, I just let you go. And she says, so I stayed in the back. And she says, and you led my mama to the Lord. And I said, and she says, mama's going to die. She said, mama's fell and she's hurt her head and uh, she's not going to make it. She's just not going to make it. And I said, well, uh, I, I'm glad I'm here with you today. I said, let's, let's have a word of prayer. And uh, we had prayer around her mama. And uh, when I got done, I pulled out my, uh, a gospel track and with my phone number on the back and I said, shared it with her. And I said, now listen, I said, if you need me for anything, you call me. And uh, she says, we will. 
the next day she called me and she says, preacher, mom's gone. I want you to do mom's funeral. I said, you do? She said, yes, I do. I want you to do mom's funeral. I was able to do that funeral and I saw that mother's family receive the Lord as their savior in the funeral. Listen, that was God. That was God. Even though I was in the wrong place and went in the wrong room. Even, listen, just do what God wants you to do and let him take care of the rest of it and you'll experience his grace. You'll see it. You'll see it. This stuff is real. This is not stuff that you make up. This is stuff that happened. My wife is sitting here. She knows. And it seems like the longer we stay in Corey, the more we see some fruit some way. We may not get them in their church, but we can sure see them get saved at the door. I mean, listen, God is still on the throne and he's still God. And even though coronavirus and all this other junk's going on, God is still saving people. And what a blessing. And what a blessing we can see is grace. And oh, listen, when you feel the touch of Jesus, uh, whether he touches you through peace in your heart or whether you hear that still, small voice, it's a great day when you are partaker of the grace and peace of the Lord Jesus. Notice the disciples here. Verse 8 says, and when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus. Man, that's the best place I could be. Is in a place where all I see is Jesus. All this other stuff. Uh, you, you ever seen these Amish uh, in, their, in their buggies? The horses has got blinders on them. They, 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 they can't see what's going on beside them. All they can see is in the front. You know, it'd be good for us Christians to have some blinders, wouldn't it? It'd help us to hear the noise that's going on in the news. It'd help us to quit being concerned. I, my cousin calls me up. He said, oh, man. He said, man, this world is in bad shape. And he sounded like he was in bad shape. And I told him, I said, listen, uh, what's wrong with you? He said, man, this news is something else, isn't it? I said, man, you need to turn that junk off. You need, I said, man, that, that stuff is eating you alive. I said, how much do you watch that? He said, I watch it all the time. He said, I, I, it's on the television all the time. I said, you need to turn that stuff off and look to the Lord. And you know what? Christians is doing the same thing. They need to turn that TV off, turn that news off, and look to Jesus. Get in the book of God and find out that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Get in the book of God and realize that, listen, he's still in the grace business, amen? He's still helping us day by day, and thank God for it. And as we move through the valleys and the mountains of life, there's always, always someone we can count on. Jesus never changes. He's the same. No matter what the election is, he's the same. No matter what the United States is doing today, listen, he's still the same. He's still our Savior, and he hasn't changed. And he will always be there. Thank God. And oh, listen, we need to make sure that we're ever in a good place where we can sense his presence, where we uh, see him as the centerpiece in our lives. I want to ask you something in closing today. Is there something you need? Why not take it to the Lord? Maybe you're going through something right now and you say, Preacher, you don't understand what I'm going through. Well, wait a minute. If you can see God through it all, then just trust God. Just trust Him to lead you, trust Him to guide you, and enjoy the good place. Enjoy the good place. I told my wife last night, I said, we're sitting there and on the couch in that little room. And I said, boy, isn't God good? Isn't God good? She said, boy, he sure is. I mean, 
here's an old country boy from Virginia, uh, uh, old sinner saved by grace, and here's God taking care of us day by day. And you know what? I, I don't draw no paycheck from my church. I haven't in 19 years. I don't draw no paycheck. There's no checks from my church made out to Sanders Anderson as the pastor. I get to, I get the leftovers. Leftovers might be five dollars one week, maybe a hundred dollars, or maybe two hundred dollars another week. But there's no salary. There's no guaranteed salary. The church is debt free. The church has light bill, phone. I may have these light bill, phone bill, water bill. The uh, we, we, our building's paid for. Everything's paid for. We have building insurance. Everything is paid out of the... preacher i appreciate the message today is a blessing our heads are bowed and eyes are closed and <clears throat> nobody's looking about we want to give you an opportunity to take the things we've heard this morning as during the sunday school hour we heard brother anderson bring the message on prayer and james the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much and um, it's a blessing to think about the blessings the Lord wants to give when he says uh, call on me call unto me and, and I will show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not to be able to trust the Lord and, and then to have your faith to increase and to be able to have greater confidence in the things of God all of those things take place as time of that spiritual growth and the things that take place. It's a blessing. This morning, as we think about that moment up there on the mountain, as Brother Anderson bringing out here today, up there on that time of the transfiguration, seeing Jesus, it's a good place, amen? Maybe the Lord has spoke to your heart this morning and you have a burden, something you want to come and pray about, the altar's open. I want to give you an opportunity to respond. And as we wait upon you, Ms. Marie is going to begin to play softly. And we'll ask the Lord to just speak to your heart as you come. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. We'll wait upon you.
As we wait, heads are bowed, eyes are closed, this is a good opportunity for you to come. God speak to your heart. The song that Maria's playing is turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. songwriter says, Oh, so are you wearied and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's a light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. And through death into life everlasting, he passed and we follow him there. Or sin hath no more dominion over us, for we're more than conquerors. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, amen? Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. In the light of his glory and grace. Amen. All right. Very good. We will encourage you to be back tonight at 7 o'clock for the evening service. Also, want to encourage you on your way out this morning, uh, the offering place out here in the lobby. Make sure you drop that in as you go out. And uh, please be generous, and let's be a blessing to the Andersons, okay? We want to be a blessing to them. Uh, they came to be a blessing, but we want to be a blessing back, amen? Um, I was going to mention, uh, during the science choir, Brother Anderson, you were talking about the time you were down here last time. And you and I went to the hospital and uh, saw that gentleman. Uh, we tried for probably a good hour and a half. It must have been an hour and a half that we were there. And we went down, sat with the family for a while, and we came back in the room, and he had, he had guys coming and going. Matter of fact, there was one fellow that came in there, uh, like a cousin or something, who supposedly knew the Lord. And uh, we, we had been trying several times to, to get through to this fellow. He's laying in the bed. He's dying. He knows he's dying. And um, finally, we, we turned as this guy was coming in. I looked at the fellow. I said, hey, you get to take over. I said, we've already gone through the whole thing of salvation he, he you know he, he's asked us questions we've got it but he's just not come to that point of of personal faith and trust yet so if you get a chance you know pick up where we left off in the meanwhile he, brother anderson and I, we went down the hall and sat down there with the family for a little bit had a cup of coffee and came back and uh, we tried so hard to do everything that we could you know humanly speaking to try to witness this fellow and he just he was cordial but honestly, at one point, he just, he just it was like somebody flipped a switch. He's like, he looked at us and said, all right, I'm done. He literally said, all right, I'm done. I'm like, oh, <laughs> great. So we walked out of there really brokenhearted that the fe fellow, he, he knew. And uh, as Brother Anderson said, we got down in the parking lot and had prayer together, prayed that the Lord would do something. And as he said, God brought the gentleman that actually what it was, his, this fellow who's dying, his son and his buddy drove motorcycles, on a, went on a, on a, I guess, what would you call it, a, a, a run. They were going to take a motorcycle run. They decided to get on their motorcycles and come here and visit this guy's dad. And they drove all the way from Philadelphia. I think it was Philadelphia. I think it was either Philly or, or Virginia. I can't remember now. It, was, it wasn't like across town. It was a good ways. They drove several hours on motorcycles. And the son's buddy looked at him and said, you know, you need to get saved. When, so what's it going to take for you to just finally do this? And he finally led him to Christ. 
the buddy who drove the motorcycle however many hours to come and witness this gentleman was 72 years old. 72 year old man gets on a motorcycle and drives to come and visit this guy. And before it's all said and done, he leads him to Christ. A preacher and I tried for an hour and a half. A guy on a motorcycle walks in and says, You know what? You've been playing around here long enough. When are you going to get, you need to get right with God. And he leads him to the Lord. Amen. But collectively, some plant, some water, it's God that gives the increase. Amen. So, Brother Anderson, he had witnessed to him. I'd witnessed to the gentleman before. Then we were witnessing to him together. Then the neighbor guy came in. He witnessed to him. But it wasn't until his son shows up with the buddy. His son isn't getting anywhere with him. But the buddy, <laughs> old biker guy comes along. You need to get right with God. You know? All right. When are you going to do it? Let's do it right now. <laughs> Amen. So praise the Lord, though. God answered prayer. And by the way, the family then called me later to do the funeral. And we had four or five people from that man's family that trusted Christ as their Savior when I preached the funeral. Whew. Matter of fact, his, it was his son. His son, I believe, and his wife got saved at the funeral. You just never know what God's going to do. Amen? So... Take, take the opportunity God gives us and be a blessing. Amen. Well, let's pray together. And again, uh, thank you for being here. And we we'll look forward to everything. Come back tonight at 7 o'clock. Amen. Father, we thank you again for your goodness. Thank you for this opportunity. And thank you, Lord, for the message today. Thank you for when we can uh, just continue to uh, look to you. We're thankful, Lord, for even when we're, maybe this old world is turned upside down and crazy things around us. We want to keep our eyes on you, and uh, we can behold your glory. Lord, when we see that, then uh, it just kind of takes all the other things and they fade away. I pray that you'd bless as we travel, give us safety upon the highway, bring us back to the appointed time. We'll praise and give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. We'll see you here tonight, 7 o'clock.